I find circadian clocks so engaging because you can look at an organism, a mouse, a fruit fly, or even a person, me, and what that organism is able to do at one time of the circadian cycle is very different from what it can do at other times of the circadian cycle. So this means that just about every aspect of our behavior, physiology, metabolism is regulated in time. So if we can understand that process, we bring the dimension of time into biology in a way in which it's never been considered previously. I'm Mick Hastings. I'm the head of division of neurobiology here at the LMB. I'm actually a native of Sheffield in Yorkshire. And I did my first degree and my PhD at the University of Liverpool, where I did marine biology. And that got me into body clocks, tidal rhythms, and behavior. My students in the lab typically work on circadian rhythms in mammals. We're particularly interested in a part of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And how does that, as a cluster of nerve cells, actually define 24-hour cycles? biological day and biological night. The project we're offering this year is to look at the molecular and genetic basis of the tidal clock. As a field, biological rhythms or chronobiology has done very well to discover the components of circadian clocks in humans, in mice, and in fruit flies, indeed in fungus. But the tidal clock present in marine organisms such as Eurydice pulchra really is uncharted territory. We know the animals have such a clock because of their behavior patterns and their metabolic patterns when we hold them in the laboratory away from the beach. But the actual genes that make up that clock work and how those genes interact as a network controlling the entire organism, we, we know nothing about at all. The tidal clocks in Eurydice will be present in, in lobsters, in prawns, in crabs, all these commercial products. So if we can understand how that clock controls the metabolism, the malting, you know, the food, the reproduction of these species will be better placed, first of all, to help deal with disease. So we get more efficient aquaculture and also nutrient utilization. If we can feed these organisms less, we are less polluting of the environment and we can feed them less because we've got these animals making efficient use of what we give them. So it's beautiful basic biology, but it does have a, you know, a real world application beyond the lab. If a student or postdoc wants to join my lab, for me, I need to make sure that they're excited about biology because that's what drives me. You know, I, I can work on invertebrates, I can work on enzyme structures, I can work on mammalian brain tissue. That is the variety that biology brings and it's intellectually so engaging. It may be that I'm quite biased, but I genuinely do believe that the LMB is a terrific place to work. The research groups are small. You know, they're not the football team size groups that you see from some laboratories in different places across the world. And because they're small, it means everyone knows what everyone else is doing. It's very interactive. We're interdependent. And so really, if one walks around the building, I always tell our students when they start, just view everyone else in this building as a resource for you to use. Don't be inhibited, go and knock on a door, speak to people, they, they will be happy to help you. And actually, once you become proficient in your skills, you'll become a resource for them as well.